Are you dogs ready to do this? It's time to switch the planter over from corn to soybeans. And we got the cat here helping, but this is actually not cat dog. This is cat dog's sibling. <laughs> Cat dog's sibling is weird too. There's just something about that band of brothers or sisters or whatever they are. I've never looked, but it's also weird. It just doesn't usually hang out quite as much. First thing to do is pop these covers out, switch out the bowls from the corn bowls to the bean bowls, which is totally different than a cereal bowl. <laughs> this is kind of a slow, dusty, just annoying, monotonous process. So I got Onyx coming down to help out. That way we can let the kid get dirty. I hear a pit bike. That is his standard mode of transportation now. Are you ready? Yep. To get dusty? Good. Hello? Nope, you're fine. It just takes time. Is Grandpa doing tillage? Yeah, he's finishing the wet water. So that that'll dry up a little bit while we... And that's the one right out here, correct? Yep. Spilled a little bit of corn. Mm -hmm. Where's that deal? Sorry. Oh, it's already out. Sorry about that. We'll sweep it up. It's hard to get it off and have the yellow thing there. For yeah, me. they get pretty stuck on there because you got to run them pretty tight on these. Okay, we got the row units, units. We got the bowls out. We'll replace the bowls. We're gonna move all these knockout wheels back. I blow them out with a little compressed air just to get them clean so I can see, make sure everything looks good inside of them. And then we also need to empty those tanks up there, which aren't very full right now, but we need them empty. So since you're such a smart Alec, you climb up there and open them up, would you? You don't have to tell me. Some people's kids. Ugh. Well, now Cat Dog is here. Sup, Cat Dog. You want to run these levers while I hold the bag underneath to dump them into? Shuka, 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 shuka. Well, yeah, I know that, but we got to catch it. Well, then catch it. Okay. Onyx is being too slow. I'm going to have to tackle this on my own. It's hard to find good help. Okay, now that those are empty, I got Onyx putting the bowls in. I'm gonna come through and check the tension on them because you want them pretty snug on these high-speed planters. This one's pretty good. If they're a little bit loose, they're pretty easy to, that one's good. They're easy to take off and adjust this pin right here to get them tensioned up. <laughs> got the kid greasing, he's telling his own jokes and laughing to him by himself. That's a family trait, he inherited that. Definitely not from his mother's side though, that's all me. Now some of you might remember from a couple videos back, this piece that I didn't want to fix in the field. I wanted to do this in the shop in case things didn't go right. So this is kind of broken and it has to maintain a good seal to continue pushing seed into the row units. So I was afraid it wouldn't maintain a good seal long enough. But if I did it in the field, I also was pretty sure it wouldn't go well and I'd have to come back to get tools anyway. So I'm gonna do it right now, perfect timing. Dad must have that field finished being tilled. We're working right across the road today in a good sized field, a little over 200 acres. That's good size for our area. He must have it done. Anna, did he disturb your nap? Anna? Good dog. Are you good? You gonna tip over? She seems pretty good. Then I like to go through and check the gauge wheels. This one's a little bit loose. I'm gonna tighten it up a little. If you have those too loose, they'll start pushing in the mud. They won't be as consistent.
Now we're gonna get the extra seat out of the back of my truck. Anna hates it just as much when Onyx runs the skid loader. So this is all extra seat we bought just because we weren't 100% exactly sure where we'd end up. So now this is all bags that'll get returned. But I'm gonna stack it. And yes, I broke one. Just uh, not worry about that for now. You're good, keep coming. Come on, focus camera. No, you're clear. All right, you can lift it up, straight up. Now we gotta get rid of this pile. Next up, we are going to unhook the hopper bottom from the truck sitting over here. We're gonna unhook it down there, that's why he's gotta move the ripper out of the way, because we're gonna unhook it way down out back here, so it's out of the way because we need to put a spray trailer on there. And I'm pretty excited. We have a brand new spray trailer. Uh, it's done, it's finished, but I don't have time to go get it right now. So we're gonna hook the old one up, use the old one for pre-emerge. When we get a rain spell here and we're down for a day, I'm gonna run up to Canada and pick that thing up, but it's a five and a half hour drive to go out to a ways northwest of here. Well, he's driving down there. I'm gonna raise this door up because we got a concrete guy coming to take a look at underneath this door and the sliding door and maybe an area where we're gonna put some shelves. A lot of people asking what the plan is for concrete in here. The plan is not concrete in here other than under the doors to keep the birds out and under the shelving just to hold them strong. But otherwise we're gonna bring in fresh gravel because concrete would be well over $100,000 for this building. So. This is going to stay a cold storage gravel floor building for a while. These should be good enough with an empty trailer. Huh? Yeah. Okay. There we go. You're good. Now off to the old van trailer, which will be for sale once we get our new one. So if anybody's interested, nothing wrong with it. He's stuck. Oh, he's actually, he can't go forward or backward at the moment. So this is all gonna be, we're all gonna add gravel here and a little slope to it and finish this off when the excavators get out here. But for right now, I'll push on you with the four wheeler. It might be enough. I don't know if that's gonna line up real nice. Eh, I don't want to beat up my four-wheeler either. Eh. Send it. Or low. We'll be back with a skid loader. Okay, I'll wait here. I won't go anywhere. All right. Yeah, he's hung up on that ridge. we can't back up. That's all fresh gravel from last fall. Hmm. Hang on! Your fronts are way down. It is. Yeah. So soft. yeah. Oh, we got an audience that showed up. soft back here which we knew it would be it's fresh gravel and it's still wet here because we're not done getting it graded correctly but I wasn't expecting that much I guess if he gets stuck again maybe we'll just decide it's faster to drive up to Canada and get the new one cat dog come to help oh no just came to lay in the grass in the shade we'll try this the other way It's a difficult angle to hook up at here. We don't have room because of that shed. He's gonna try and get a little bit straighter. And he's stuck again. 
This is starting to get annoying. I'm gonna put the camera down and we'll just get this done. I'll be back when we got things figured out. Well, he didn't miss anything. I pushed him out and then the next, the next try he hit it perfect and it's locked, but. There's a valve underneath here, right up in there that sticks every year. And we gotta work that loose before this thing wants to come out of here. So it's a good sized air leak, which means it won't build air pressure and blow the bags up and take the brakes off. 90 right away. Yeah. Well, we'll just drag it out of here. Oh, he's gonna get stuck. No, no, come on. Both fronts are, there we go, three are turning. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. There, it started moving. All of them are turning. So now we can kind of stab on the brakes and usually, I mean, so far, every year we've had that trailer for 10 years, now that valve is loosened up. It just gets tight during the winter. It's still leaking, you can hear it, but all four are turning. All four are turning, but you can hear that leak. Hopefully it loosens its way up. I've sprayed WD-40 in it before and it doesn't do anything. Okay. Well, we think that trailer is gonna work for now, but we took a little bit of a lunch break. I'm gonna finish greasing on this planter some because both of our batteries on the grease gun went dead. So Onyx went and took a pit bike break. I'm gonna finish greasing this. Dad is gonna take the sprayer out and test that with just water in it, just to make sure everything's functioning properly on that. And then we will start well, we gotta load the seed tender first. You'll see. There's the first unfolding of the year with the old sprayer. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it yet, but we did trade sprayers. So we have a newer sprayer coming as well. New to us, pretty new. But um, that, that actually was done yesterday, but we haven't gotten to get it yet. And we're very impatient. Okay, we're all greased. The final thing I'm gonna do here is double check a few of the depths on some of the rows using this set and seed that I got in the mail. These, this is actually kind of a cool deal. I'll show you what it is here. I already changed my mind. The row units are too high unless I unfold it and the shop is too full to unfold right now. So I'm gonna unfold it in the yard but only to put seed in it. But I'll show you what this is for. Also, by the way, this is completely not sponsored. I've never met the guy. He just sent me a couple sets of these set and seed in the mail and I think it's a really cool, uh, it's a cool idea. So not every row is always consistent with where your handles are. So you can set these handles to adjust the depth differently or you can set them the same, but they might plant at different, different depths because these row openers don't wear evenly. So the depth is controlled by these gauge wheels that move up and down. And what you can do is take a jack and you set this to the depth you want. You can see there, you can adjust it to an inch, inch and a half, two inch, whatever you want. And then, this comes up on a jack like this. You can set each row individually and mark your spot. Now, if I'd have gotten this a little earlier, I'd have gone through in the shop here probably and set them all, but we're very impatient and we're not gonna do that today. Like I say, I think it's an awesome idea. It'd be an awesome thing to do when you're going through your planter at the beginning of the season. I know a lot of guys do that, and we should. We're just impatient and it's time to get going. I'll have a few things to change in my monitor here, just to change my crop, go to soybeans, put in my populations, change my field. I don't know what variety I'm gonna be planting, but no, I don't wanna do that. I gotta change fields first. Well, I think I got things set on the monitor correctly. Back this out and unfold it and we'll decide what variety we want to plant. Pretty busy around the yard today. We got a lot of stuff sitting out. That time of year and soybeans honestly is busier than planting corn because we've got to have the roller moving which is hooked up over there. And we got to have the sprayer going which means we need the water trailer going. We've got the ripper set up because we got a field that's got a lot of manure in it from the landlord's cattle that we're going to work in. Uh, several days before we go down there and hope it gets rained on and we have a whole bunch of corn to haul But I'm gonna need that truck to go get the new trailer We need this truck on this trailer and the third truck is broke down right now and at the shop We'll go get seed in this thing Chemical in there with that with the that uh, much water in there already. Uh, they'll get on the 300 gallons by the time I get it tested played with, with, yeah uh, backwards here. Oh no, it's 
Okay. We can load straight into the planter with this thing, and we have on you know many times, but uh, whatever, we've decided to load it into here first. So for those of you who are gonna bring that up, we're gonna put it in here first, and then move it to the planter, because it really isn't that much more difficult. Go, go, gadget, conveyor. Soybeans of the year. It wasn't all that long ago we did our first corn of the year. Good doggy. Well, we got 200 units of beans in here, so I've been planting about 130,000 seeds per acre the last few years. It's worked out well. That should do 250 some acres if my math is right. And so that'll easily finish this uh, field we're going to. The field we're going to is big. It's like 225, 230 acres. So I wanted to make sure we got enough in there to uh, finish that. Yep. Simple as that. Let's go plant some soybeans. Oh, I see a little, a little stone there. Everybody must get stone. Hopefully this goes smoothly. Once in a while you run into some hiccups when you switch crops and it's almost always because I forget to change something in the computers. Uh oh, we got a leak. When I turned the pressure onto these two tanks, this one here sprung a leak. It's right where I thought it would be. Thank goodness the gates aren't open. It's just this uh, little slider sort of mini drain deal. There. If one of these was actually open, it's pretty hard to get that closed again when there's beans in there wanting to come out. But this deal, like a mini drain deal, is pretty easy. Simple fix. Try this again. Set it down and then it builds tank pressure. We'll look at this gauge right there in the middle. Make sure our pressure's good. And while we check on that, it's gonna fill the row units with beans. We seem pretty close on everything. So, before I even do any end rows, I'm just gonna cut straight across the field here. Set the planter down so I can watch everything. With auto steer, it's easy enough to do that. You just come back later and pick up where you left off. Everything's looking pretty green. Everything looks okay back here. Let's step out and check the depth. It might be a little deep, so I wanna check that. moisture down here. These fields are still plenty wet. The moisture is actually good for the beans going in the ground, but there's a point where it's too much and you're creating a lot of extra compaction. They seem plenty deep, so I'm going to take some down pressure off, some pressure off the closing wheels, and raise them up a quarter inch. Less down pressure on the row units. Less down pressure on the closing wheels. And now I gotta actually go out there and move the T-handles to raise it up a quarter inch. Didn't do it when I was out here before because the planter was down and you can't move those handles with pressure on the gauge wheels. Found this little guy too, nice little bonus. I was gonna empty that rock trap today. Guess it's more of a rock box, not so much a rock trap. I want a rock! Let's go check this setting. Oh yeah. Now they're better. I'm finding more beans. That's better. Looks like my rock guy is here. But I already got the one that was out here. It's fairly sticky out here yet. It is crazy. It's just not drying, is it? 
No, it's dust on top, but boy, you dig down an inch and it's sticky. You think you're too wet? I think we're on the verge of it. We've been thinking we're 15 hours now, another hour and it'll be a lot better. The sun is shining and it's warm out, but it's relatively humid out there. We do get a lot of passing clouds. Uh, I think it's drier here now that I got over onto stuff that Dad actually tilled up this morning. It seems a little drier when you dig in the soil. We're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep moving here. There's there's always more rain coming and time equals yield for us in the spring, so we're doing it. Fun fact, I still have not had one single downforce sensor warning this entire spring. The upgrade definitely worked, so things are looking good. The only thing I got is Row 19, about half the time, is telling me that the downforce is more than what I have it set to. And we actually, we put a new sensor in there and it didn't change it. So it's not, it's not the sensor, it's not the connection like it was last year. I don't know what it is, it's not a big deal, I'm still going, but hopefully the dealer can send somebody out in the morning to change out whatever the other options are. It's honestly, it's more just annoying to me as the operator because it keeps showing me that. There's no alarm going off or anything, it's just, it's bothersome. But otherwise, like, I'm really only noticing that because everything else is running perfectly, so I have nothing else to stare at and, and want to fix. Stop looking at me, swans! Looks like everybody's getting the sprayers out and throwing some pre-emerge down, getting ready to put beans in, a lot of people finishing up corn. Got Dad waiting on the road for me. I got just enough acres in gonna need seed real soon so he's gonna uh, he's gonna take me back to the yard and we're gonna get the seed truck out here well if you watched a couple videos ago you know we came down here to get this kind of in the middle to the end of the rain shower and it wouldn't make it out of the approach so we left it here just for two days but they had more rain down here and it's not nearly as dry down here yet as it is at home we're only five miles from home let's see I'm, I'm still in four so Let's hope this thing drives out of here. We'll try to back up first. Well, that's a good sign. I'm moving. Easy. Not an issue. Now, I'm gonna pull as far to the side of the road as I can and try to leave mud in the road ditch, not on the road. Must be mud in the rims too, it's shaking pretty good. It's nice to see things greening up around here a little bit. Even if our pine trees are still ripped up from the storm last year, we'll be running lawnmowers soon. Just in time. Spray trailer's full, but it must have just got full. No, I guess it's not full. The cleaning guy's here. I've got uh, probably 10 acres, maybe even 20 of seed left. I wasn't thinking on how much was in there, but I'm gonna make a few more rounds here before I load up. And as long as I'm out here, I may as well set up my auto track turn automation because this is a fairly, uh, let's see, I want a, not that, top and bottom. Hmm. Just kind of trying to teach myself some new tricks. Because of the shape of the field, there was some different stuff I had to do to set up the auto track turn automation, but I'm pretty sure I got it set now. At least I'll know for sure when I get to the other end. The auto track turn automation is the piece of technology in these computers that'll actually slow the tractor down, lift the planter up, turn the tractor around, line it back up again perfectly, set the planter down, get going, and speed me back up. So I literally have to do nothing more than eat this sriracha style jerky that I got from We The People. It's delicious. A little bit slimy, so I would recommend a moist towelette for your sensitive millennial fingers. This is our no-till hill. It doesn't grow much anyway, so we try to keep as much on, on it as we can. Don't open it up and let the sand blow around. So I just crank a little bit of pressure into the roll cleaners, and it plants real nicely. Well, I'm close enough to empty. I'm on this end, so we're gonna fill it. This 
go get another 100 acres in. There we go. It's doing it all on its own. All full of seed. Got the tractor doing all the work for me. Heck, I, I could just take my boots off. It smells a little bit funny in here right now, but it's, it's comfortable. Onyx is home from trap shooting. Now he's out here helping us get this stuff rolled so that Grandpa can be out here tomorrow running the sprayer, putting some pre-emerge down. Beautiful evening. I'm empty on seed, so I'm driving back up here to the seed tender. I am gonna fill up the planter, which is gonna make the tender full. I meant empty. It's gonna make the tender empty and the planter pretty much full. Onyx took off a little bit ago. He's at the house eating dinner, gonna go to bed. And I'm gonna shut the camera off for the night, fill this up and go do the same. Thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate it. We will see you in the next video and keep it between the rows. Mm -hmm.